Hi, I'm Intaka Khan, and uh, I've done my uh, BTEC from VIT Velour, and I've been teaching physics uh, since last seven months, and it's been a wonderful journey in C square coaching classes. Uh, so I am also a teacher by choice. So today I'll be teaching about uh, pseudo force and inertial frame, non-inertial frame. How can we solve the how, how can we use Newton laws of motion in non-inertial frame? So before we uh, start with that, we can uh, we can talk a little bit about Newton laws of motions. What uh, what are the three laws? And then we can go into uh, inertial frame and non-inertial frame. So first of all, I'll be discussing about frame of reference. How we can say an object is it uh, is in uh, motion or a race, or is it a relative term? So starting with uh, frame of reference. So frame of reference is a space through which we can observe any other space or a place where the motion is taking place. For example, uh, if I if I ask everyone, is this pen? Is this marker is at rest? Many of you will say yes, it is at rest, but no, because motion is a relative term. We can't say this is at rest. We have to specify from which place we are looking at this marker. For example, if if a uh, uh, if a guy at the uh, moon is observing this, uh, I, I know that they can't observe this, but if they are observing this pen, then. They, uh, they will observe that this is in motion, while for me, this pen is at rest, this marker is at rest. So, frame of reference matters a lot. Basically, uh, if, if I talk, take a ball and I'm, uh, I'm in a bus and I, I throw a ball, uh, I just leave a ball, okay. Now that ball is simply falling, for me it's a free fall, but for a, uh, for a man who is, uh, who is Outside the bus, like uh, for example, he's observing the bus from a distant place. Then for him, it is a 2D motion. It's not a simple 1D motion. It is moving forward as well as it is moving down. So it is kind of projectile motion for the ball. So that will be doing some projectile motion. It is moving in X as well as Y. So for that guy, it will be a 2D motion. For me, it will it will be a free fall. So, uh, as the frame of as the uh, frame of reference changes, the motion changes. So, uh, if I talk about type of frame of reference, there are two types of frame of reference. That is, inertial frame of reference and non-inertial frame of reference. So, uh, I'll be giving examples of inertial frame of reference and non-inertial frame of reference. If we if we say a body a, bo a bus is moving at a constant velocity, then it is a inertial frame of reference. Why? Because it follows the laws of motion, or it follows the law of inertia. The first law of motion is Newton laws of motion. The first law talks about law of inertia. Now, what is this inertia? Inertia is the property of a body, so as to resist the change of motion. For example, a body is at rest, will try to be at rest. A body moving try to be, uh, will try to move. For example, a, a luggage kept at, at a rooftop of a vehicle. If the, if the vehicle applies a brake, then the luggage moves forward if it is not tight. So, uh, inertia is just a property of a body, which says if, it is, if a body is at rest, it will be at rest. If a body is moving, it will try to move until and unless an unbalanced external force is applied. Agar ball hai, ye rest pe, jab tak mein isko force, isme force na lagao, ye move nahi karega. So every body have a property of inertia. So inertial frame is the frame in which all the laws of motion are valid, Newton laws of motion are valid. And non-inertial frame is the frame which is accelerating and which do not follow laws of motion until and unless some extra magic is been done. For example, a vehicle is accelerating and I have kept a pendulum. 
uh, let's say it's moving at a constant velocity. Then, after some time, this vehicle accelerates. Now, if I'm observing from a distant place, I'll see without any force, this will be at certain angle, theta. Now, for me it will be a magic, but in physics we call it pseudo force. So, pseudo force helps us to convert non-inertial frame to inertial frame of reference and apply all the laws of motion. So, uh, let's talk about uh, pseudo force. How can we apply pseudo force and uh, what will be the direction of pseudo force, what will be the magnitude of the pseudo force and where we can use all this uh, pseudo force concept. So, I have taken this example, right, that a vehicle is moving with a constant velocity and this pendulum is at the mean position. This is the mean position, this is an equilibrium position. If I, if I leave a pendulum, it will be in this position. But, when this vehicle will accelerate at a constant acceleration, let's take this acceleration is constant. This pendulum will automatically go at, a, at some angle and settle at that place. That will be at some angle. And the vehicle is moving at a constant acceleration, that, that pendulum will be at, at that angle at the constant angle. Now, if I'm observing from here, for me it will be magic, right? Because first of all it was uh, in, in mean position and after some time when the vehicle accelerated, that is at some angle. Now how can we solve this problem? This problem was solved by pseudo force. Pseudo force is a non-visible force which is which is active due to the acceleration of frame of reference or frame. If the frame accelerates, the pseudo force and it is always opposite to the acceleration of the frame. For example, this vehicle is moving forward with a constant acceleration. The pseudo force, let's write it as Fp. Fp. This is exactly opposite to the acceleration. If I call in my words, it is ke ulta dodo. Simple. Let's take another example. And uh, let's talk about its magnitude. It is equal to mass into acceleration. Simple. Let's take another example. Uh, if a lift is there, and I'm standing over there, uh, let's take a weighing machine. And I weigh 66 kg. Let's take it uh, 660 Newton. My weight is 660 Newton when it is moving at a constant acceleration, a constant velocity. But whenever this lift accelerates, I'll see deflection in my weighing machine. If it is accelerating upwards, my weight will increase. And if it is accelerating downwards, my weight will decrease. Now, why would this happen? The same concept. Ukhar ke ulta dodo. If acceleration is downward, my force, pseudo force, will be upwards and its value will be ma. Mass in acceleration. My weight will be mg. In, the same, in this case, my weight is mg and acceleration is upwards, ukhar ki ulti jodne pe, I'll get a pseudo force mg. Now, net weight, in this case, will be, will be equals to mg minus mg. This is mg minus mg. And over here, it will be, net weight will be equals to mg plus mg. Now, I can see my weight has been increased. Over here, my weight has been decreased. So, this is another example of zero. Let's take another example. Uh, let's take a truck. Let's take a truck moving at a constant velocity. I've kept a block over here. I've kept a block over here. This is a rough surface. It have a friction. Now, uh, friction is somewhat... Uh, which acts, uh, which opposes the relative motion. If the, this block will try to move backwards, the friction will be uh, acting forward. Now, if this truck is moving at a constant velocity, then no friction would act. I mean, uh, 
it won't, it, this block won't move. Let's take uh, this mass M. Now, if this truck accelerates, if this truck accelerates, let's take uh, it is accelerating forward, then a pseudo force will act in the opposite direction with whose value will be equal to MA. Now, the force on this block is acting in the opposite direction to the acceleration, hence the friction. Now, this block will move, try to move backwards, so the friction will act in the forward direction. Now, uh, this can be, uh, the maximum value can be mu s, which is a limiting friction. We have, uh, we have learned this in friction. Uh, now, if, if these two forces e e are equal, then this block won't move. But if the pseudo force is greater than limiting friction, this block will slide down and fall in the ground. So uh, all these applications are of pseudo force. So uh, it's th there is just a trick that if the acceleration is forward, just plug that out and join in the opposite direction to the mass. And whose value will be? Ma. Now uh, we know that force is a vector quantity. So direction matters. So direction matters. Over here, uh, 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 it can be asked that what will be the angle this pendulum will be resting at. This pendulum will be resting at. Of mass up. Or uh, when I can feel weightlessness. Now th this is very very good question that when my weight will be zero. When my weight will be zero. So I think everyone can answer that if this acceleration is equal to G. Now my net weight will be equal to zero if G is equal to sorry, A equals to G. Now when this can be possible? This is possible only when this is this lift is under free fall. When this can happen? This can happen if the row, the braided ropes over here cuts down and this falls and this is a case of a free fall. In that case, my acceleration would be acceleration due to gravity. So all these are the examples of uh, pseudo force.